Hey folks, thanks for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Just want to take a moment to talk about something that's important to me today. It's called uh, fisetin. Okay, it's a um, it's a naturally occurring flavonoid. You find it in a lot of fruits, vegetables, persimmons, cucumber, onions, strawberries are the best source of it. Uh, uh, from a dietary perspective, and it's emerging as something that can combat cellular senescence. And if you've followed any of my social media, my limited social media to this point, you'll know that I'm kind of geeking out on cellular senescence. So I wanted to do just a quick um, video with you to talk about, like when I survey the landscape of Fisetin and the gurus out there who talk about uh, natural health and sustaining your body and combating aging, uh, aging, they never tell you how these supplements work. And I'm a biochemistry geek, I'm a pharmaceutical chemistry geek, I want to learn how does it work. If you can show me how it works, then I can understand and validate it as a potential to add to my supplemental regimen. So I want to talk about two components of fisetin today. One is clearly its anti-senescent properties, but two, I also want to talk about it as a powerful antioxidant. So firstly, senescence is a state of cell cycle arrest, often brought on by um, direct DNA damage um, or um, there's something called replicative senescence. Um, that is just the function of transcribing DNA becomes challenged because of uh, telomere shortening and things like that. So a cell, or to push a cell into a senescent state, stable cell cycle arrest, okay? And, and so that it avoids uh, a process called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Uh, there's a complex interplay of kinases and it's highly, highly regulated. So the two main categories, the two main uh, effectors of keeping a cell in a senescent state or pushing it into a senescent state are called P53 and there's another pathway called P16, okay? And ultimately, these factors act on a system called CDK and they phosphorylate CDK, and this phosphorylated version of CDK maintains the cell in an anti-apoptotic state, okay? Now, when you add fisetin or quercetin or dasatinib, um, they act to prevent this phosphorylation, so the CDK mechanism can no longer keep it in an anti-apoptotic state. So the cell naturally or is much more likely to enter a uh, apoptotic state and ultimately, well, for lack of a better term, kill itself. Um, and that's how senescent cells are rid and that is how fisetin um, can impact that pathway. Now that's clearly an oversimplification and uh, as we move further into our fisetin education we'll <laughs> dive more deeply into it with more specifics um, but fisetin is also a powerful antioxidant and it's becoming clear that it upregulates our own glutathione which is the most powerful antioxidant natural antioxidant that our body uses to quench free radical species um, so fisetin upregulates glutathione, enhances that glutathione pathway. But interestingly, it seems that fisetin can also function uh, as a quencher itself. It can also engage reactive oxygen species on its own, which is kind of a common feature of a highly planar molecular structure um, that that single um, radical oxygen species can associate with the fisetin um, you know electron networks and ultimately be quenched and a third thing fisetin does which i think is really cool because of that planar structure i just mentioned it can intercalate between phospho uh, within the phospholipid bilayer of our cellular membranes 
and minimize oxidation of those phospholipids, preventing or maintaining the integrity of those phospholipid uh, membranes and, you know, presumably, um, you know, enhancing cellular life and, uh, and integrity. So just wanted to give you a brief overview of Fisetin, the hows and the whys. I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks for joining me. Stay regenerative, my friends.